Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 27th of September and I really hope that you're well and thank you for joining me. Do feel free to put something in the comments and let me know how you're doing. As always we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the day's readings and a reflection on the reading. On a Tuesday the theme for prayer is incarnation and so we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, yet born of the Virgin Mary. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy and strong one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and incarnate one, holy and indwelling one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and life-giving one, holy and guiding one, abide in us. And the psalm today is Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth for evermore. My help comes from the Lord. And today we continue reading from the book of Acts, and if you were with us yesterday, you'll know that we left uh, the story of the early church with Paul and Silas having been thrown into jail. So we pick up in Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sir, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in, the, in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptised. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. When it was daylight, the magistrate sent their officers to the jailer with the order, Release those men. The jailer told Paul, The magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Another amazing uh, episode in the life of the early church. And let me read you a reflection written by Bishop Christopher Herbert. Define what you mean by miracle. It is an unexpected and um, extraneous event that surprises the observer by its liberating, life-affirming consequences. Or is it a radical internal change of heart in someone who shifts from unbelief to belief? Or is something only a miracle for those who believe that it is? What kind of characteristics must a miracle have for us to describe it as originating from God? Questions pile on questions. That is not to say that the problem of miracle can be shunted off to one side as just one of those things. To answer one of the questions posed above, for something to be a miracle, it could be argued that no matter how astonishing or awe-inspiring the event is, 
it must have the fingerprints of God all over it. And to go further, the miracle must be marked by grace and power, but in such a way that it does not overwhelmingly compel the onlooker to believe in the divine originator. In the story of Paul and Silas in prison, every prisoner had their chains unfastened, but not everyone concluded that the event was caused by God. In the same way, in Jesus' lifetime, many people witnessed his miracles, but not everyone became a disciple. Human choice and human perception entered into the equation. The courteous self-limitation of God is astounding. It's an amazing statement, isn't it? The courteous self-limitation of God is astounding. We're not compelled to believe. We have a choice. We have our own perception that comes into the equation when we encounter God. And so we pray and we begin with the collect for this week. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. That the coming of Christ may disperse all darkness, that the birth of Christ may hallow all life, that the love of Christ may be in every heart. Lord, have mercy. That the peace of Christ may fill the world, that the descent of Christ may uplift all peoples, that the humility of Christ may teach us gentleness. Christ, have mercy. That the presence of Christ may be within us, that the power of Christ may be upon us, that the Spirit of Christ may fill us, Lord, have mercy. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, born into a human family, may we know you in our homes. Bless our families and friends, our neighbours and all your people. Grant that we may rejoice that you are made flesh and dwell among us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father who has shown his love for us be with us. May the Son who's come to be among us be with us. May the Spirit who fills the whole world be with us. The Holy Three be within and without us now and evermore. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. I hope you have a great day. And uh, if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.